Hello everybody, Average Gamer, and welcome to another episode of Supreme Ruler Ultimate Tutorial. In this episode, we're going to be talking about defense, the defensive tab. Um, not as long as the last episode. The last episode was pretty much our longest one so far. So in this one, pretty much a couple things we're going to skip out. First one is the cabinet. It's the exact same as it is on the other one, as well as the uh, facility controls. It's the same as the, uh, the other stuff. So... We're going to get into the stuff in the normal here. So firstly, it is the shield with the little arrow. This is just a little icon showing you what uh, what's going on. Like, this is just a generic picture. So this picture shows you your current active military personnel. So these are these are personnel in bases. So in barracks themselves, just massing the, the, like, basically troops that are being utilized in the administrative sector. Like, for example, here, the majority of our forces are in reserve. So the majority of our active personnel are in military facilities. So they're like they're they're working in the uh, in the land production. They're working in the military complex. They're working in the barracks itself because they need a specific amount of troops or at least administrative personnel in those buildings to have them at least working. So that's usually if you have everything in reserve, you still have a number here for active personnel. That's what that is. Here is reserve personnel. So right now, if we were to call up our military, we have a pool of sixty-eight point two million people to call up and put into our military force. Down here it shows you your current options. So for example, first one is selected units. That's the unit you currently have selected. So we're going to select one of our beach class warships. If it's in a pile of groups, or if it's a pile of units, multiple units, it will show those pile of units. We'll just move him out of the way just to show here. So first thing, we can select him. Since he's only by himself, here for selected units, it shows him by himself. These beach class here, if we select one, it will show us that there's two there. It kind of shows you who, where, where troops are piled type thing. Now, below this is deployed units. This currently will show you how many units are currently active in your military. So right now we have three beach class, which are right here, and we also have a constellation class um, basically it's like a, it's an AWAC. Here it is right here. Kind of looks like a C-130. I'm using it for early warning at the moment. Next one is reserve. So this shows you every unit that's currently in reserve. Now, when you send a unit to reserve, it will f basically position itself in such a way, um, and store itself in a certain location. So we're going to zoom out a little bit and it should show us. We'll click reserve. Oh, come on. Okay, it won't do it for some reason. Sometimes it bugs out a little bit, but any place... Oh, here, here we go. So, right here, here are places with barracks. So, anything with this little purple icon around it, when you select it, is where units could be in reserve. Doesn't mean they actually are there. These are just locations where troops could be in reserve. So, as we said in the last episode, when troops can be in a barracks when they're in reserve, this basically shows you where all your barracks are. We have none here. Well, we can we uh, oh, we have none here either. <laughs> What's the mural on the border? A couple there, a couple there. Uh, we got one there, one there, a couple in here, a whole bunch of them along here. So that shows you all the places where your land troops, because we clicked land specifically and then reserves, that shows you where all your troops could be in reserve. That doesn't mean they are there in reserve, that just means they're there. Two ways you can figure out if your troops are in reserve in a specific location. First option is selecting said location. After selecting the reserve button, and you'll notice that here it now says 265, so we're going to click away again. It's 3,894. Click again. It's 265, so we know there's 265 units in reserve at this location just outside of Minsk. So we know here there's 265. At this location over here, there's nobody. This location, there's 35 units. And you can use the little scroll bar here to see what units are in reserve at that location. Next one is battle groups. Battle groups are basically your, your action groups where you can have multiple different troops in basically just groups. Um, for example, these guys all over here act alone. We can highlight them all and put them in the same battle group. So for example, we highlight, this screen will open up. We can actually create a battle group and that will put 
multiple units that are highlighted and basically a group together so they act together, fight together, and follow the rules of engagement together. And you can have up to, I believe it's 90 in total battle groups. Now as I said earlier, we're going to ignore what the cabinet is and we're going to go through these ones here. So this one is available missiles. This is the ability to click on a person to type of missile. So here's land launch missiles, air launch missiles, naval launch missiles, and sub launch missiles. You can click on the air launch missile for example, click the type of missile, and then click whether you want one missile deployed or all the missiles deployed. This actually will send out all the missiles of that type to the appropriate vehicles. You mean even basically if it can put it on there, it will put it on there and max out. So if you want a mix of uh, anti-aircraft, like you know, surface-to-air missiles, or uh, surface-to-air-to-air missiles, sorry, and air-to-ground missiles, unfortunately you can't really do that. You would have to specifically deploy just a single missile and slowly work it out that way. Um, it's a bit of a hassle, I will admit. Um, but that's unfortunately the way it is. Um, I usually just mass release them all and let the AI control the Air Force and the AI will do its own thing. Down here is, as I said, the facility controls tab. Now, to get extra tabs here, like for example here it's select the battle group name and select a battle group to disable. So we're going to create a battle group here. So now we have a battle group. We're going to click the battle group and here we can rename the battle group. Name it. Sir, there we go. We have the Baltic Fleet. There's currently three units in the Baltic Fleet. If you hover over it, it shows you what's currently in the Baltic Fleet. You can disband or even. Well, that's pretty much it. <laughs> now, you'll notice that when we have a unit highlighted, or before we have a high unit highlighted, there's a couple options here. First one is orders. There's no hi unit highlighted, so there is no current orders. We do have global rules of engagement, or rules of engagement. So here, for example, you can tell all your units what speed to go. Go to cautious speed, go to normal speed, go to your fast speed, fast speed, or go at your fastest speed you can. Next one is route. Do you want to go cautious route? Just normally path your way to there properly. Go to the most direct way, so A to B straight through, or do you want to go the quickest? Now the most direct sometimes isn't the quickest, like for example, the quickest, the most direct from Orsa to Finskvitsk is this straight line. Now if we had an amphibious unit, it would do it if it's set to most direct, you know, direct. But if we also set to quickest, it would actually go this way and then we'll come down this way and then we'll come across because it's the actually the quickest. Take the rope. It would actually calculate, okay, if I went from here to here, is it quicker to hop the river and keep going in this straight line, in, in this straight line just to go this way? Or should I go up and then down this way? So it'll think, uh, think that stuff through. Uh, the next one is initiative. You can actually set battle groups to different initiatives. So this is basically the AI control. High AI control is when you set up your theaters and all that stuff. It will actually do it again this way as well. Um, you can actually set battle groups that you want to control specifically to a different initiative. So for example, you set a fleet or the, the, the Navy completely to 100% initiative, but we have three aircraft carriers. Well, I want those three aircraft carrier fleets under my control, just to be on the safe side. So that way they don't go and do something stupid. Therefore, I create those three battle groups put cruisers, destroyers, submarines with them, and an aircraft carrier with its air force, and I position them strategically around, you know, in, in, in our naval, um, naval coverage. So one in the Baltic, uh, one in the Black Sea, or sorry, one in the Caspian Sea, one in the Baltic, then one just off the coast of, you know, say, you know, Taiwanish. So we got our three aircraft carriers set up that way. So one can go into the Mediterranean, one can control the Baltic, if not even, uh, you know, the North Atlantic, and then the one in the Pacific can, you know, do some damage in, you know, the Philippines, Indonesia, Australia area, even the West Coast of the United States, if need be. So if I have it set to high, the, the AI will maybe just, will break up the fleet altogether and just send them all over the place. At least this way, if I have it set up to be a battle group, but I also set the initiative to none or to none, I can control that one. 
I can tell them where to go. Contact options. So this is if you're at war with someone. This will kind of tell you, you're telling the, uh, your, your units when you tell them to go from A to B, knowing that there's, say there's an attack, right? So we're, this is our border. This river is our border. We have our units on this side. They have their units on this side. Now, they have some units on this side that might be pushing through, say, here. But we're going to move our units from here, or from here up here to reinforce. Because we're noticing that they're kind of massing here. And we're going to put some artillery here. So what you can do, contact options. So if you go to pursue, that means if they engage a unit, so say our infantry comes up, find someone here, and we tell them, hey, hold on, stop and fight here. So, or sorry, if we tell them from here to here, go. Currently, where it's set to avoid, what will happen is your AI will just try to go past them and just dodge them all together, right? So it'll continue on to where you told it to go and take a couple pot shots, but it'll keep going. It's going to avoid them. If you set to engage, it'll stop and it will fight them. And then it will continue on to its target. If you say pursue, it will actually go and fight its target or even go attack that target. If that target withdraws, it will follow it until it's dead and then we'll go towards you told it. Um, I usually go to a gauge, so it'll go, so our, for example, our infantry will go heat from here to here, and we'll engage the target here. They'll withdraw, say we're back over the river to this little village here, and our unit will continue up. So it still goes where we want it to. Next one's loss tolerance, so this is the, basically the percentage of, of it getting knocked out. So at high, you're basically telling it to lose the majority of itself, I think it's above 80, or up to 80%, and then it will then withdraw from battle. Um, here, I believe, is, uh, I think it's 60%, it will draw from battle. Low is, if it loses 10%, withdrawal from battle, then none. You're basically telling it, hey, if you lose anybody, get the fuck out. Next one is, you can apply to all, so you can actually apply this to everybody, all over the world, of your units. Here, you can apply it to just future units only. Here, you can tell the minister if he can control it or not. Opportunity fire, this basically tells you to fire on any enemy that's within its range. So for example, if you're, say we're running artillery from here to here, and as our artillery gets to here, it's in range, but it doesn't see the unit. One of our aircraft, our AWACS flies over, and all of a sudden that pops up that there's a unit there. If you have that turned on, it'll stop and lob a couple artillery shells until it disappears, and then it'll move on. Approach. So you can tell it to approach stealthily or not. Missile acceptance. This is where it, the, whether the unit will actually accept missiles or not. So say you want to strategically position missiles in certain spots first. Say we want to put a bunch of scud launchers on our west, uh, on our, uh, our east, our basically European defense line. But we're also strategically positioning scuds around, you know, all these other borders here. But we want these guys to have them first. We can actually highlight all these units. It'll kind of go like this. Go to rules of engagement and tell them, hey, we don't want you to accept missiles yet. Then we can do that. The next one is just accepting it. This is just where this unit is subject to overall changes. So if you do the global on one, if this is turned on, this unit is not subject to any changes. So that's where, for example, if you do have our own two foot, our personally controlled three fleets or aircraft carrier uh, battle groups, we want that turned on. Because if we change anything else associated with the uh, rules of engagement, we don't want those fleets touched. Because we are controlling those fleets. We're going to highlight another unit here. Uh, next one here is filter and unit selection. So when you click it, this just shows you if, depending on if there's multi, more than more more than one unit on a location, you can actually filter it. So say we had a cruiser, an aircraft carrier, and a submarine. This will actually just show you all the different types of cruise, like types of ships and stuff. So that way, you can just filter things out better if they're in a, a pile of units. Now, unit orders. Now here is basically how you command your units. You tell them to move to, so this is where you tell them to move to an actual location. You can tell them to patrol. So for example, if, if, I, if he's here, wherever the unit is located initially is patrol point one. You can only tell them to patrol between point A and B, and that's it, unfortunately. Which, in my eyes, kind of sucks. But you can tell them patrol point one there, and that's it. So this ship, this beach classify on pause, will start patrolling 
between those two locations. And it'll go back. So wherever the ship is, aircraft or unit, when you initially send tell the unit or said um, anything to patrol, the initial spot of the order of patrol will be the first patrol point. And as I said, it can only patrol between two different points. Attack unit, that's simple. It will attack any unit you pick. If you right-click, for example, if there, we were at war with Poland, it would attack said patrol ship. But we're not at war with Poland right now. Next one is attack facility. If the unit or has the ability to attack a facility, uh, whether it be missiles, bombardment, or even the ability to attack something, it will attack a facility. If there's more than one facility, when you right-click on it, it will give you the list of, just like this, the facility to pick. So we would click attack facility, you would say, would you want to attack the airfield, the sea pier, or the small village? Next one is escort. This is where you tell ship one, to, or any, the, any basically unit one, to escort unit two. Now, usually I'll do this in a fleet version, where I will set up a battle group and I'll tell everyone in the battle group to escort the aircraft carrier. So in this case, we're going to tell Beach, um, the 106th Beach class escort cr uh, cruiser, to escort Beach 113. We're going to Beach 113, we're going to tell it to go up here. You'll notice that Beach 113 will now have the other beach with it. We're going to tell Beach 113 to go over there, and you'll notice that the other ship will always stay just a little bit behind, or we'll catch up. So that is, so if we told them both to go on, if we told 113 to go on patrol, you'll notice that both ships will then be together. Which is, it's good in my eyes to a point. Later on, you'll be able to see where you'll be able to give additional orders of battle groups to move together and things like that. So for example, we'll get these guys together, order them there, and we'll order this guy here. And we'll actually get into the next order real quick, because you see here, formation move. Common speed. I actually can turn that off. That way, if anything becomes a straggler, it'll move with it. So we're going to highlight all these guys and say, you all move the common speed. We're also just going to make things simple. Set them in a battle group. So if we set them all up, we say, I want you to go here. Then when you're there, I want you to go on patrol to there. So now, theoretically, if there's a different ship in there, aircraft carrier, whatever, they'll all go to the same speed. Basically, it's the lowest speed. I like these guys and bring them back again. Next one is load unit. So, for example, if this was a ship that was able to load aircraft or ground units, or even if it's a, an aircraft that's able to load, it will give you that option. Now, if it's an aircraft, it has to be at an air facility, like an air base, to load the troops into it. Um, if it's a warship or transport ship that can carry troops, it has to be at a sea pier or a, uh, a seaport either way. you can tell units to go to repair so if you're fighting a war and you realize you know what this entire battle group over here is being really banged up i want to get them to withdraw i don't want to lose any of them so i'm going to be a little cautious i'm going to withdraw them and i'm going to let them build up or repair themselves you can give them the repair order and they'll go to the most closest facility where they can get repaired which in this case would be an air base for aircraft a barracks for land units and a CP in a, God, I forgot the name of it already, a seaport for naval units. You can tell the units to go into reserve. That tells them if you double click, um, actually I want to mention, if you double click any of these, it automatically does it for you. But uh, repair, if you double click repair and highlight a unit, or highlight a unit, click double um, repair, it'll automatically select a base for you and go. You can also single click and then click the base and it'll go. Uh, reserve is the same thing, if you double click, It'll find the closest base and go into reserve there. Or if you left click it first and then right click on the base, it will go to that base that you uh, that you provided. Now, mind you, sometimes when you do this, it doesn't quite work properly and the AI kind of gets a little lost. The last two are scra or three are return base. This is where you can tell it, you can double click. It will glow, it will go. It will go to the most local naval facility, for example. So we're actually gonna highlight all of them and double click return base. And they'll all go. We're going to get rid of that. Next up on our list is Scrap Unit. This is the ability basically to remove the unit altogether. Um, if you see my live stream, I recently did one of these for a um, 
an AWAC aircraft or a, you know an early morning aircraft that uh, we built and ended up being completely useless. So we scrapped it. Basically, you just get rid of it. Um, you get a little bit of uh, stuff back from uh, from the goods that was used to create it. A small fraction of it, but you can get some back nonetheless. Clear that basically clears orders. So if we tell the unit to go up there. We tell the unit to go up there. We click it. Clear. That stops it immediately from fulfilling its orders. We told it to go back to a new, to the return base, so it goes back to yet again to the most closest base. It's the best thing to do to redeploy missiles to them, or if they need to get you know you need to get troops back really quickly. Uh, the next option here is filter or uh, sorry uh, technical readout which is this button right here. This gives you just a general readout or basically the schematics of said vehicle, so that unit, where it tells you. Like, for example, this says the fuel amount it needs is 6,000. So 6,000 liters or whatever. Its overall profile is 30. Its spotting is 86, so it sees 86 kilometers. Its precision spotting is 19, so if it's within 19 kilometers, it's more accurate. It's got a combat time of 120. Its overall range around the world is 13,890 kilometers. It moves at 46 kilometers an hour. The maximum amount of missiles it can have is three. It has no aircraft capacity, no carrier capacity, so it can't carry aircraft like VTOL aircraft or uh, sub or uh, sorry, helicopters or anything like that. But it does give the option of a couple things here. First, it does, hey, I can actually hit facilities. I have a fortification attack. I can hit infantry or soft targets. I can hit hard targets. I can even set down submerged targets. Surface attack, it actually can attack other surface ships. It cannot, after you hit a high air attack. And it can also not hit mid-air targets, but it can hit close air targets. So aircraft that fly below, I don't remember the exact, um, exact altitude, but any aircraft that flies below a certain altitude, it can hit. Um, and it can't hit anything basically above that. It has no defense up close against uh, soft, but ground defense, it has 420 ground defense. It has a air defense itself of 600, 265, and it's indirect defense of 500. So it's gets, if it's getting directly in bombard, if some, basically if there's some, if you bring it within range of enemy artillery and they try to shell it, it'll bring it in. There's a couple of things you need to look at here. This is a little icon for the escorts. This tells you it's a known design. If instead of a little laboratory bottle here, it's actually a skull, that means it's a obsolete design. Down here is a standard favorite or excluded um, little filtering option. Um, you don't really need to worry about that too much, you'll, to be honest with you. You'll never, ever, 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 ever use it. Um, RTB. Uh, let's see what else here. And to be honest with you, that's it. A um, couple things you might want to know here. This shows you the amount of units down here that you have highlighted. This shows you, quote unquote, their combined arm strength. And this is their supply. So this is if they're in supply or not, which is really good, important to know. Um, the distance here, the 288, that's actually the distance I'm telling it to go. So as long as you know by the tech readout, its range is 13,000 kilometers. If I scroll out, it can actually go, if I ordered it right now, you want to go usually half of that. So we want to go around 700. So it can go all the way to, oh shit, it can actually go, all the way to here. So it can go all the way to the western US, theoretically, though it technically can't, right? Because the US is in the way. But we can send it down to the Caribbean. Um, what was the range again? Uh, 13,000, so have, that's... Uh, so six and a half. So we can send it about 6,000. So right here is as far as we want it to go. So if we wanted to, we could send it to patrol the eastern U.S. Um, pretty much this section all the way around here of Africa, or even the Mediterranean. You know, if you also wanted to relocate it, right, you know that way, okay. If I were to send it back to the main section of China, for example, I would have, a, I would have some hard times, right? I'd have to end up bringing it around here. Um, what else here? This shows you the amount of personnel that are currently utilized. So we're just going to select this one. So right now this one's using 169 units. 
This is the ability to center on the unit. If you're zoomed in somewhere else, you click it, boom, you're centered on that whatever zoom point. Um, and that's about it, to be honest with you. Um, there's a little button here, which I've never used. Um, select map designation for order. I have never seen that ever lit up. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That is um, all that stuff. Now, what we're going to talk about in the next section of it is the actual deployment and things like that. Because now when you select these things, it changes a little bit. So firstly, if we click land units here, so we're going to filter just our land units. These are our current units that we have for our entire land force. So you'll notice right now, we have no deployed units. We have 3,995 reserve units and no bother groups. So we can click reserve units, and you'll notice immediately when we click reserve units, these two buttons show up. The first one says no unit selected. The second one is deploy all. So if, say for example, we go to war. We get claimed, um, like Finland here declares war on us. And we need to basically activate our entire military force. You hit that. And what you'll see is these units going down. So what we'll do first is we'll select one unit here, just to kind of show the theory behind everything. So the 7,293rd Light Infantry Division is airdroppable and is a soft target. Now we'll get into all that stuff in a, in a later episode, but well, let's uh, let's get a little involved in it. You can double click it and it will show you where the unit is. So right now this unit is at this barracks right here. Well, we want to deploy it. So what you can use, you can click it and you can click here. And this is actually the ability to just order the unit wherever you want it to go. Like say for example, the poles here were invading and moving up, you actually can select the unit, then right click on the map and tell the unit where to go. So we're going to tell this one, I want you to go to this location here. Okay. This one, I would like you, we're going to left click this little button here. Actually, we're going to click this base, make it easier. We're going to tell this one to go here. And we're going to tell this one to go here. Uh, we're going to tell this one, nope, we want this base in this space only. Oh, come on, don't do this to me now. You... There we go. You go there. And you can go there. So we've just quickly deployed uh, five land units just by clicking add a selection and you send. So basically just it's just a single order. You're telling that unit to go to that location and that's it. And notice that right here our reserve actually went down. So for example, if you left click this nope, nope, we don't want that. There we go. So you click these guys right here. Now first thing you can do is go technical readout. It'll tell you how many units it needs. So personnel, we need 810. So you'll actually what is this? That's a real place to sign. Good to know. Um, you'll, so you'll notice that uh, right here, it needs uh, 810 units. It's NPC protected, it's amphibious, and it's technically a hard target. So you notice that this number here will go down that 810. So right now it's 2,900. Click and boom. And you'll notice right there, it went down. A couple things to always keep in mind when doing certain things like this is to always think this number, how many units am I am I bringing up? What am I bringing up and how many troops they use? Now to show you how this can go wrong, well, we'll actually show you with aircraft as well. Aircraft, same thing. Click the aircraft and decide what you're gonna do. Now you can also, if you have a unit that's already, um, we'll say, obsolete, you can click that aircraft, that, that design and click scrap unit and it'll scrap it automatically for you. Now one of the things I forgot to mention is the missiles. So you can actually click the missiles button here and it will show you what missiles automatically go with what's selected. For the air here, you'll notice that when I click the missile button again, one second, there we go, missiles, reserve, I click the queen bee, automatically the missile here shows what missiles can be put on aircraft. And you'll notice that it actually says missile Missile larger than platform minimum maximum size. The maximum size for a queen bee, if we actually click on the technical readout, is zero. So can't do anything there. But if we go down to one of our other aircraft, which have the little missile icon, for example, the J7, 
suddenly now we can actually deploy J7s. I believe that's the J7 down here that we just deployed those missiles to. Not to be 52 Strata Fortress. <laughs> well, we'll just put you in reserve. But what will happen is when that aircraft becomes active, when you order it to become active, it will then... What is going on here? Really? A Danish... Well, fuck you, Dane. Denmark. Um, what will then happen is when that aircraft gets basically, you know, brought up out of other reserves, that missile, that specific missile, will be automatically put on it. Um, that's one way to decide what missiles are going to go where. So if you decide all my J7s are going to have air-to-air -air missiles only, you can actually select that option. So you can go to Air, Reserves, and select all your J7s. For example, go to Missile Deployment, and tell them, hey, I only want you guys to have air-to-air -air missiles. You can click the missile, and click, you know, deploy to group. The computer will then know, okay, so those air those aircraft, when they get deployed, only get this missile, which is pretty good. Which is something I almost forgot. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to deploy, we're actually going to show you how to deploy troops as well. If you hit this little button here, so we want to actually just deploy guys from this location. If you want to just generically deploy them, and then decide where they're going to go, this little option here, deploy. Click it, and the units automatically will show up. So we're going to tell these guys to go there. Oh, I want to make Poland a little nervous. In there. So we just deployed some, some units to the border. There you go. Later on, as I said, we'll go into specific tactics and, and ideas and things like that with troops itself, invasions, supplies, and, and things like that. Now, say we're going to war. Big war. Huge war. With uh, Poland here. We decided we want to completely activate our entire forces around the area. What you can do is still click the base where the resources are and just click deploy all. It will deploy everyone at that specific base. Click this base, deploy all. Uh, click this base up here, there's nobody. Click this one, there's nobody. This one, there's nobody. I want there's nobody. Here there's 181, click that one. And over time, you'll notice obviously our resources go down, but these units will slowly activate. Now you'll notice that obviously they'll slow down a little bit, they'll activate, but there'll be a little while for them to actually bring out the units. So you'll see that our units are kind of working in a group here. That's because we activated this little option here. So that way the units always stay as a, as a group. This one we're going to bring up here. These ones we're going to bring down here. And these ones, because we want to make Poland nervous. Uh, we're going to bring these guys just over here for now. And what you'll notice is the AI should theoretically counter this. It'll see the units kind of en masse and it should theoretically mobilize them. Now, as I said, this is how you mobilize just from one specific base. If you want to mobilize your entire military force, like say you actually now want to deploy your aircraft. Well, we got some aircraft. Where do we have some aircraft? So here, we have two KC-135 tankers. We're going to deploy those. Um, let's see here. I, to be honest, we... I kind of wish... It, there we go. So we got three. We got um, a demon and two constellations. We're going to deploy those. So unfortunately, it doesn't show you where your aircraft are, are in deployment. So right here, for example, in the middle, down here, we've got a KC-135. Uh, here we have another constellation. Here we have a B-52. 
Uh, what's this base? This base here has everybody. Well, why don't you all them? We're going to tell them, hey, y'all, you guys, we got a party going on in Poland. Uh, come over here. So all those guys are going to come flying over. So pretty much every unit, air, naval, or land, all can be deployed the same way. Now, if you want to deploy everyone of a specific group, we'll do it with the Air Force. We're going to click Air Force units. You don't even... You just click who's in reserve. Actually, we don't need a base. Click just for the reserves and click deploy. Immediately, everyone becomes active. We take a hit on our active personnel. But when we scroll out, you can see all our active aircraft are now active, which is pretty good. You can do the same thing with your Navy. I'm not going to do the Navy, though, because the Navy will be a pain in the ass. And you can also do it with your reserve land aircraft. Now, mind you, um, Let's just look at that real quick, okay. What you can now do as well, you can also just call up your entire military force. Your entire military force. By pressing this button right here. This brings up everybody. So if we kind of click out a little bit. So we click here. Right now we currently have total 582 units active. I think some aircraft crashed. And uh, our reserve units of 4,661. If we hit this, everyone's going to be deployed. So watch this. Watch this number here. So as you see it drop, as time goes, our units are now completely and 100% going active. So you see the reserve personnel go to go to deploy. Then you can order your forces. Now India and Pakistan. Oh, that sucks. Wait, did these two go to these two declare peace? Oh, well that's good to know. Um, in our Let's Play, these two are fighting each other. If they declared peace and this is their new border, um, that's pretty horrible. But yeah, so you can actually bring up your entire military force. Now I have my military forces in my, my construction zones. There, there, and up here. So they're kind of centralized a little bit. I've got a little bit of a weak, weak underbelly over there. Uh, no one's actually freaking out over there, so we're pretty good. Oh, I'll accept that. And I have no idea why I'm actually worried about this, because I'm not saving any of this. So so that is the way to deploy your troops. Now, in the next episode, we're going to go over tactics, um, hard targets versus soft targets, um, aircraft, high-low versus um, middle-range aircraft. Um, then we're going to go into supply as well. Um, we're also going to go into naval forces, uh, best way to utilize them, sub surface and aircraft carrier. I like to put aircraft carriers kind of all by themselves. Um, and uh, yeah, lots more stuff to go over um, in the next few episodes. And so now, if there's anything you would like to see specifically, because um, we're kind of running down to the end here of generically what everything does, and, you know, um, I know there's still things we got to talk about, such as military units and how to deploy them properly and how to utilize them the best, which we'll get into in the next couple of episodes. Um, but yeah, if there's anything you want to see, Please uh, leave a leave a comment. I will not hesitate to either answer the question in the comment or even just make a video out of it. There you go. I read all my comments. I may not respond to them. I may just hit like, or I may not even hit like because I may not even have the time for it. But I read all my comments. So 